May some saving sense of humor liberate us from arrogance and pompousness, and from thinking ourselves more important than we are. May we make amends if we chance to ridicule others or their views. May we be cured from making war and calling it peace, from special privilege and calling it justice, from indifference and calling it tolerance, from polluting and calling it progress. From all these may we be cured. May it be so. We record this. Um, so today's Dharma talk, it comes from a Dogen quote called intimacy with all things. Um, and he was once asked, what is awakening? And he said it was intimacy with all things. So that's where the talk comes from. Um, I do want to start today's Dharma talk, um, with a very traditional chant that most Dharma talks are started with, um, within a lot of Zen centers in the United States and Japan. The Dharma, incomparably profound and minutely subtle, is rarely encountered, even in hundreds and thousands and millions of ages. We now can see it, hear it, receive it, and maintain it. May we completely realize the true meaning of the Buddha, the Tathagata. So I want to start today's talk by thanking you for your practice and thanking for you, thank you for, for being here. Anywhere else you could be today, um, you chose to be here. And, and I want to acknowledge that and say thank you. I'd like to start today's Dharma talk out um, with, a, um, with a story. And it's a story of um, a young priest student with his master, um, and it's in the Chinese um, Chan tradition. So we have the two people. We have Liang Shan, um, who had a teacher, Tuang An. And Liang Shan was asked by his teacher, what is the business beneath this patched robe? Now, the patch robe he's referring to was the traditional robe that monastics would wear when they would become priests and, and go to, uh, to join a monastery. And in the early days of the Sangha, the Buddha instructed his monastics to make sure that they only used pure cloth in creating their robes. So this pure cloth that the, the priests and nuns used in the early days of the Buddha meant it was cloth that nobody wanted. It wasn't attractive, it wasn't pretty. It was used cloth, um, preferably cloth that had been chewed by rats or oxen or had been scorched. Now, monks in the early days would scavenge uh, cloth rubbish heaps, charnel grounds, crematorium areas to find scattered and thrown away fabric. By the time of, of Lian Shan and Tuang, um, the robe came to also um, represent the different meanings and the different multi-layer representations of what it meant to be a follower of the Buddha and one who had taken monastic vows. And it seems to me what the teacher is asking of his student is what do you know what these robes represent we wear them you put them on and a lot of times the things we do we do unconsciously without a lot of forethought so i know i know what we're doing here but what's the meaning of this why are we doing this and what's the deep meaning the meaning not just under the robe but under the skin in other words, what are we doing? And the young student, the young priest, he didn't have an answer for his master. Um, and his master expected as much. So he says, the master says to his students, he goes, um, 
studying the way and still not reaching this round is a most painful thing. He asked him to ask him again. So the student asks his master, what is the business between the patched robes? What is this all about? And his teacher's reply was intimacy. And in the story, the priest, the young priest, the student is awakened greatly by this answer. Now, I, I love this story and I love this aspect of the teaching. On a certain level, it's an unexpected one, but it's really at the heart of the teaching and at the heart of awakening itself. As I said earlier, Dogen Zenji, the father of Japanese Ben, said, enlightenment is intimacy with all things. Intimacy. Intimacy is something for many of us we struggle with because of its ever requiring increasing levels of opening ourselves up to the outer world. This can be daunting. It requires a softening of boundaries. We can say a thousand times vulnerability is good, but it's the practice of vulnerability where transformation takes place. And this opening ourselves up to the world can be terrifying because vulnerability and its inherent risks. We may get hurt. Those that we are most intimate with are those who know our darker sides, those who know our shadow selves and are still with us. And not in spite of those things. I really believe it was in our courage and trust to share those sides of ourselves with them. Intimacy is a sense of closeness, warmth, and holding dear, an honoring of sacred space. It is the safe space that our intended and unintended disclosures of openness can take place. This is the heart of intimacy. Um, and I appreciate this from a teacher named Sedo. He says, quote, our closest intimate relationships are built on time and trust, fostering mutual enrichment, appreciation, increased ability to risk, to feel like you really know someone's heart is to rest in intimacy, to be open and impacted by the other is to know intimacy, end quote. For many of us, this kind of closeness is focused on usually just a small, a select few. And for some of us, it's only our lovers or our spouses. And even that is hard enough. How many marriages even rise to this level of intimacy, of emotional intimacy, of fearless disclosure? It's easy to lie naked next to a lover, but to untie our masks that we wear, now that takes real courage. As Guillaume Cabose Sensei writes, modern man has too many masks to wear. We must unmask ourselves sincerely, earnestly, and be truly who we are. End quote. How? hard is that to not just show the front but the back to not hide the darker side the side of ourselves that we feel is unlovable so then our practice is the cultivation of intimacy with all things to see as one zen teacher puts it quote, how intimately we are woven together with each being and to embrace ourselves as we are and to embrace everyone as he or she is. I love that imagery. Woven together. 
like in a beautiful tapestry. So our practice is this. It is the cultivation of intimacy with all things, including ourselves. That's where we start. And the interesting thing is that we think this is an easy thing to do because we're with ourselves all the time. But how well do we really know ourselves? Um, so when we spend so much time with ourselves, we think we would know ourselves, but there's a big difference between doing time and spending time with ourselves. I think in a lot of ways we do time, but we don't spend intimate time with ourselves. And one of the reasons why we don't is because we are continually judging ourselves continually judging our experiences as good or bad or otherwise. This is the opposite of intimacy. If anything, this continual judgment of experience is the thief of intimacy. The ironic thing is that we can live a vast part of our whole lives in this kind of protective, judging ego landscape, this autopilot, and live most of our lives on the surface of things and never really live. We live much of our lives in a maze of thoughts, stories, worries, expectations, frustrations, and disappointments, and that's just on our drive to work. I love this from the poet Ho Sen, who has written that shrouded in a cloud of depression, thoughts of what is going wrong, one after another. That sounds like some of my days. The ironic thing is that we think we are intimate with ourselves. Um, but what do we know about ourselves? What do we know about the stories that we consider us? And we don't even realize that they're simply just a story. A story given to us by someone else. Our parents, our society, our culture. In, the state, in this state of mind, we live unaware of the immediacy and access of a daily grace because we are living on the surface of things. And here is why we practice, why we cultivate an awareness practice is so not to live on the surface of things. The joys of Zoom. Chongyong Trongpa taught that meditation, mindfulness practice, is about making friends with yourself. Our meditation practice is about spending quality time with our own mind and heart. Learning not to be carried away by the drone of the small ego self in its continual litany of judgments, injustices, and disappointments. And to be able to find that deeper, inherent, self-obscured Buddha nature that we can't find because of all the stories. The noise that we settle is the noise that keeps us, that, that makes us always keep on feeling that we have to keep going and be busy and doing something. But in reality, to cultivate intimacy, we need to slow down. We need to turn our innate awareness, follow the breathing, and the rhythm of our breathing. Then we can cultivate a calm that is the beginning of intimacy. 
this is why a regular awareness practice, a mindfulness practice is, is important. As Guillaume Kabose Sensei teaches, quote, it is I only, the mind is only when we are calm, that we are able to see things as they really are. It is only when the mind is calm, we are able to see things as they really are. A disturbed or unsettled mind cannot see the truth of things just as a disturbed water cannot reflect the moon." End quote. Namo Amida Butsu is one way that we can calm our mind. When we choose to come together as we are, without a need to be anything than what we are in this flow of now, whether that is happy or sad, confused, scared, grieving, angry, anxious, any myriad of things we may be feeling or experiencing, and to be willing to bring with us, to bring it with us, and let it sit with us and be with us without judgment, by accepting the invitation to simply come as we are, we can let go of so much of the noise that says we are unlovable, broken, or somehow less than we should be. Accepting the invitation allows us to become open, open to ourselves, open to others, and really intimate with ourselves. Uchiyami Roshi teaches, quote, to practice Zazen meditation is to be intimate with the self. In our daily lives, we always worry about our relationship with others and we're absorbed in competition with them. To practice meditation is to let go of all the comparisons and just sit being the self that is only the self, end quote. As we cultivate intimacy with ourselves, as we are, only as we are, we can then see greater intimacy with those around us. As Zenkai Blanche Hartman teaches, quote, it begins with yourself. Become completely intimate with yourself. And through this intimacy with yourself, the possibility of being intimate with another arises. End quote. At the heart of this intimacy is the way of oneness. Again, from the teacher Sedo, quote, when we meet in the absence of the idea of each other, there is intimacy. When there is just the bird song, there is intimacy. When I am afraid and separate, yet still there is also intimacy. With trust, creativity, and curiosity, the information we need to proceed in the world is found in the entirety of these moments. End quote. And here's the important thing. As we engage with our world in a more intimate way, the more we will see, the more we will become aware of all that is supporting us. Our default is not to see the world as it really is. Our default is to see the world as we are. If I'm a stranger to my own mind, carried away by the rise and fall of thoughts and emotions, I'm going to be blind to the grace that abounds. And another aspect and the final aspect of intimacy that I want to share is the cultivation of the practice of intimacy with all things. As Dogen said, it is to be intimate with all things. Well, what does that mean? That means when we forget ourselves completely, then we can be awakened by the myriad of things. This is because, as one teacher puts it, quote, the myriad of things communicate their wisdom 
with their forms and sounds and the emptiness, harmony, and uniqueness of the ephemeral self. And the world are understood. The worlds are understood completely, end quote. Now, I see this as the call of an integral part of mindfulness practice to become intimate with the sunrise and the sunset. Slow days bask in boredom, days shorter than a heartbeat, to turn our attention to the dance of bees and butterflies, of the color blue or the scent of a lilac to be intimate with the sound of thunder or the crash of waves or the falling of a waterfall. We turn our attention to the soil, to the sun, to each leaf helping us breathe, to become aware of the grace of clouds and of their gift of rain. In cultivating this intimacy with all things, we cultivate at the same time an intimacy of our being in the midst of it, of our being one with it. We also can become aware of the universe sustaining us in each thing, in each piece of food on your dinner plate. We are supported and sustained every day. In this awareness, our intimacy with the things, with the things of the world, we can learn their wisdom. And by learning from them, it can help, help us realize our oneness. And it is there that we can meet in the absence of ideas, of stories of each other. That is where true intimacy is found. When I don't need my story of you to tell me about you or to see you, free of story. I want to close with the words of Pema Chodron and Ikkyu, a 15th century Japanese poet. First, um, first Pema, quote, when we make friends with ourselves, we no longer have to be self-involved. It's a curious twist. Making friends with ourselves is a way of not being so self-involved anymore. When we are not so self-involved, we begin to realize that the world is speaking to us all the time. Every plant, every tree, every animal, every person, every car, every airplane is speaking to us, teaching us, awakening us. End quote. As Reverend Guillaume Cabose Sensei says, there are teachers everywhere if we're willing to just open our eyes, our minds, our hearts, and our ears. And lastly, I want to close with the poet Ikkyo. Quote Everyday priests examine the Dharma and endlessly chant complicated sutras. Before doing that, they should learn how to read love letters sent by the wind and rain, the snow and moon. May that be our lives. May this be our practice. Let us examine the intimacy we have with ourselves and with the world around us. And may we all aspire not to live on the surface of things, but to be firmly deep in the dirt of things. Namo Amida Butsu.